Holy smoke. These beaches are coming in at about 70 miles per hour out with a t-shirt cannon. This vid's coming fast. Oh, oh Jesus no. Christ. James Watt and Martin Dickey are uh, back. I can't feel that. To collaborate with the best brewers in the world. Whoa. And brew a beer in the dumbest way possible. Whoa. Damn. Basically, it's the same shit they've always done. It's not bad. This is the Brewdog Show. Atlanta, Georgia is the capital city of the South, home of the Peach, the busiest airport in the world, and the corporate headquarters of Coca-Cola. But these days, the beverage of choice is craft beer. This week, we're somewhere else doing something else. You've seen TV before, you know how it works. We're in Atlanta, Georgia, the Peach State. This city was once burned to the ground and it rose from the ashes, just like Phoenix. Just like our TV show. Hell yeah. And we're going to kick things off with a beer tasting in a barber shop. Great, I could do a haircut. I haven't been to a barber shop in like 15 years. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Venice. Hey, I'm James. Uh, Jake, which one of y'all is getting a haircut? Me. Uh, it looks <laughs> like it. <laughs> um, can you do something with this mop? Yeah, we can take care of it. So Martin's here at the moment. In your professional opinion, how highly would you rate it on a scale of 1 to 10? Probably like a negative 2. <laughs> <laughs> negative two yeah, like at the moment, but we're gonna, we're gonna knock it back up to a 10, though. Negative two to 10, that sounds good. <laughs> so you should give Martin a haircut to make him look completely Atlanta, and whilst you're doing that, we can taste some beers. Sounds like a plan, let's do it. So do you ever usually drink beer when you're cutting someone's hair? I don't usually do it, but I'm not opposed to it. I think I might be a little bit opposed to it if you're using clippers. <laughs> Martin, you'll be fine. Cheers. That's not bad. Martin? Aroma. And is it normal for customers to drink beer when you're cutting their hair? In Atlanta, there's no such thing as normal. <laughs> we don't even have that word in our vocab. It's quite thick and bushy, isn't it? It's very thick and bushy, but that's a good thing. I mean, it could be more similar to you. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like a boiled egg. <laughs> right. <laughs> Martin actually used to have a ponytail. Like a Steven Seagal ponytail? I got confused for Steven Seagal many things. <laughs> <laughs> what, just in the supermarket? Yeah. This is all right right here, man. The small sip I had was delicious. Oh, would you like some more? Yep. That was a very subtle way to ask for it. So where should we go for fun? Where should we go and hang out in the evenings? Tomorrow, y'all can actually check out Claremont Lounge, and you can uh, check out a bunch of old ladies stripping. Old oh, ladies stripping? Yeah, that's their uh, draw. Sounds like my job. Yeah. <laughs> I think it depends on your taste in chicks. So if Martin went to Claremont and thought, that's a nice, attractive old lady, how would he be best to pick her up? What's the, how do you do that in Atlanta? At Claremont Lounge, you go up to her and be like, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, since they're old, ask her if she wants a drink, maybe like some prune juice or... <laughs> how have you managed to accumulate so much knowledge of Atlanta's uh, strip club scene? Losing a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Fill her up. I need y'all to come back every month. This is awesome. Jay, this is, uh, this is your beer here? Appreciate it. And uh, putting some kind of design in the side of my head. Not at all. Oh, you're just very... Now, we're going to keep this haircut uh, very professional, okay, classic. traditional and classic. Keep it vintage. Smart, how much of this 10.5% beer in this glass would you like to enjoy in one sip? Ha. Ah. OK. <laughs> I if he's going to give you more than half. You're having a wheel of a time. It's the best morning of my life. You're going to buy me another cape if you drool on it one more time. <laughs> it's a line that Superman never, ever says. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, I've known you for 20 years. This is the best haircut I think you've ever had. He actually looks a little handsome now, right? He came, he came in ugly as hell. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know how to compliment a man. <laughs> You're going to be dope, Blitty, in Magic City. There you go. You're learning well. Yeah, you're ready for the city, man. We're going from minus two to let you do it. Jay, thanks for making Martin look like a superstar. Thanks Anytime. for drinking some phenomenal beers with Appreciate us and giving us an insight into through. this city. Now that Martin's haircut has gone from a negative two to a, let's be honest, a soft six at best, he and James are off to make a good first impression on the ATL craft beer scene. Atlanta, famous for its bootleg and past famous for southern food and southern hospitality. And now with the likes of Creature Comforts, Orpheus, New Realm and Scofflaw, this place is becoming equally famous for amazing craft beer. Let's go get one. Matt Shira started his brewing career in his mother-in-law's basement. What started as a below-board operation has now exploded above ground into an 18,000-square-foot powerhouse known as Scofflaw Brewing. 
where they offer some of the most refreshing pours in the dirty south. Mott, how's it going? Hey, guys. How you doing? Nice to meet you. What can I do for you? You're yeah. famous for basement? Let's have a basement. OK, let's or two, try. Or ten. We're in Atlanta. What the hell? My friend Martin got a haircut today. What do you think of it? Right, it looks pretty good. I might even call it pretty. <laughs> See, it's, not, that. it's not just the hair, it's pretty, it's like the whole package. Yeah, the hair mostly. <laughs> yeah. Ah, cheers, cheers, guys. To Atlanta. Welcome. So this is the beer that kick-started it all off for Scofflaw. This kick-started it. Travis and I sat down at the kitchen table one night and put this beer together, and then it came out of the basement in my mother-in-law's house. Oh, so that's why it's called Basement IPA, because it was brewed in the basement? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a really stupid name, but I figured it was pretty easy to remember. And your mother-in-law helped you make the beer? Uh, no, she didn't help me make the beer. She may have uh, inhibited us from making the beer, but it worked out in the end. And this Basement IPA is a fantastic beer. It's all West Coast, it's all massively fruity hops, yeah, sure. nice toasty caramel base, yeah. and just an avalanche of amazing hops in there. It's approachable. Can't just all drink 200 IBU IPAs all day. So Scoff Law has been going for almost two years now? We're coming up on our two-year anniversary. Mostly what I see is that we bring people together in here in large numbers and families and community members are having a good time together and the beer is more of a facilitator. It's not a focus on the beer, it's a focus on the times that come with the beer. And what do you love about Atlanta? Just rapidly changing. It keeps up with the times, it's very progressive. It allows for you to do what you want to do. And the weather here is quite oppressive. The heat is insane. It's fucking hot here. So pe <laughs> people must really love it if they live here. They, uh, well, the winters are great. Summertime, it's humidity, it's just some shit you gotta deal with. And I guess the best thing about the Atlanta weather, in the summertime, everyone, all they can think about is I need a beer and I need to cool down. That's exactly right. And you've got some fantastic new breweries in town that are bringing good beer to people to drink. And with Scofflaw, what does the GOAT stand for? GOATs are pretty damn hard-headed, so it was a pretty easy decision. I wanted something for people to remember us by. So as much fun as it would be just to hang out here and drink beers, we've obviously got to make a beer this oh, week yeah, as well. Oh yeah, what's the deal? So we want to make a beer that encapsulates what Atlanta is all about. So, any ideas? The best I can come up with is something in line with Scofflaw, and that's People usually always push the limits in Atlanta on everything. Scott Fall is somebody that breaks laws that are not easily enforceable, jaywalking, bullshit like that. You might see something like a casino in the back of a truck. A casino in the back of a truck? And why don't they just have a casino in a casino? Because it's illegal. Oh. Makes sense then. Yeah, so you put it in the back of a truck, it moves around, it's incognito. So Atlanta, Georgia is also famous for peaches, so it kind of feels like we have to find a way to incorporate peaches into this beer. It's easy enough, there's plenty of peaches around. The thing I love with IPA is that you get a lot of these big fruity, citrus and stone fruit flavours as well, so peach is quite a dominant flavour, but I think we should make it bigger. How big do your beers go? Well, our beers typically range 8 to 11, 12%. We do have a couple that are 14-ish. Why 14-ish? Like, why not just 14.5? 14 is the legal limit. You can make bigger than 14, you have to sell it in another state. And that's really solid brewing, so it's quite difficult when you're at that higher end of alcohol to get them exactly below 14%. Oh, we dead, we're dead nuts on every time. Oh, yeah. And I just love the unapologetic, unabashed, here's what we do, bang approach that just yeah. is embedded in everything. Hey, there's a few people that don't like it, but you know what? You take the total number of people on your Reddit complaining page, divide it by the global population, and that's how many fucks I give. <laughs> Cheers to that. You guys want to try the big one? This is the cocoa. Cheers, thanks Cheers. for sharing. Yeah. And just smelling this beer, I'm pretty good at doing this for a long time. It's at least sort of 14 and a half, 15%, so. Uh, uh, 13. Well, it's definitely not a single percentage point over 13.9. Most people drink it out of the bottle. <laughs> I love Atlanta. This beer is so intense. It's delicious, and the viscosity in here is just off the charts. So much strong, strong cacao, that really dark chocolate. You've got everything underneath that, the stout with the burnt sugar, caramel, and a huge, underlying wave of bourbon. And I think that's what really carries this beer out, is that sort of hit of, of the alcohol bourbon sweetness at the back. It's good, I just taste a lot of fucking alcohol. <laughs> so to make this beer even more illegal, perhaps we can take an IPA and see if we can push it to 14-ish percent. I know we can do it. And this is the peach state, so we we'll have to incorporate peaches. Well, that'll help us get it up. So scoff law means to flout the law. This city has got a bootlegging heritage, and I love that idea about a hidden illegal mobile casino in the back of a truck. 
somehow we need to combine all of those things. Well, David could combine all of those things. And we could have some more beer. Yeah, it's great. This is going to be the most illegal beer ever made. I'm going to have to be drunk to pull it off. That's what she says. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Knowing they're going to have to ask David to do something that's not only stupid, but also illegal, the guys decide to soften the blow by meeting him at one of the best barbecue joints in all of Atlanta. Why is he sitting beside a guy in a seat? Oh, this never Don't happens. Come this looks official. Oh, yeah. It does. Okay. David! Yeah. How's it going? Gentlemen. Hey, David. Yeah. Who's your friend? Legal advisor. Are you sitting with your attorney? I am, actually. That's not a good sign. I heard we were going to have a conversation. I was being cautious. You're never usually cautious. David, we want to make a beer in a slightly non-legally conforming way. Can you make a rig to do that? Why is David not speaking to us? I don't know. He's usually very shy. Yes. I cannot answer that question at this time. David, do you still love us? <clears throat> yes. It's good. So Matt told us that back in the day here, they used to have casinos in the back of trucks. We'd love to take that for inspiration and make our beer on the highways downtown Atlanta, but away from the eyes of the law in the back of a truck. Can you help us do that, David? <clears throat> uh, further investigation uh, will be necessary. David, did you go to the Claremont last night? <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I am not at liberty to divulge that information. <laughs> so, I beg you not. <laughs> and did you take your attorney with you? Neither party is at liberty to say. What did your attorney do with all the footage? I do not even need to consult him for that. <laughs> so, David, how did you hear about this amazing barbecue place? Aside from being brilliant at law, he's excellent barbecuist. Ah, so this is your place as well? So you, that, you did are you me. Not, did you not? Oh, yes, Mr. B, Mr. B. So how long have you had this place for? Two years here. And barbecue is like so important to Southern culture. Why do you love making barbecue foods? People really travel from up north to come down here just to get barbecue. It's like you can't really find anywhere else in the country like that. And have you always been a chef and with barbecue food? I don't like to say chef because I've never been to culinary arts school. I kind of learned from my parents and grandparents. But yeah, I can cook anything, but barbecue is what I decided to open up a restaurant. So you've been doing this your whole life? No, I've been, I've been a welder. You were a welder yes. before? Yeah, I welded for 10 years. Wow. So you learned the art of the flame welding, and then you turned it from metal onto pigs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the ribs in the pulled pork are incredible. Where do you source your meat? We raise our own pigs in Statesboro, Georgia. So you take your pigs so seriously that you farm your own. Yeah. And the best thing to have in your glass when you're eating barbecue food is beer, and you've got some amazing beers on tap here. Thank you. So who do you use to supply the beer? Creature Comforts. Mm. Love their beers. A lot of people don't know it, but it's a, it's a deep bond with me and Creature. Um, when I burned down back in 2015. You burned down? Yeah. And uh, during that rebuild, Andrew Thomas Lee got in contact with Kimball House. Yeah. And they did an event. And Creature Comforts donated all the beer. Mm. And all the beer proceeds went to help the rebuild in Savannah. And so when I came to Atlanta, Creature was like, get him whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> and, and it's just kind of like the loyalty, that's where it stands with them. They were there when I was down, so that's who I want to be around when I get up. So. And that's what I love about the beer and food industry is, is it you know, totally cross-pollinates, and there's, there's people who are so passionate about beer and making beer, and then people who are so passionate about food and making food, and they want to help each other when times get tough. Yeah. Amazing barbecue food, yeah. fantastic yeah. local beers. We should just forget about shooting this episode and just stay here. Keep you out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> so cheers to something that may or may not be slightly illegal. Cheers. Cheers. He's in. In addition to Scofflaw, these are our top five breweries in Atlanta. In 2011, Scott Hedin left his cameraman job, sold his punk albums and Nirvana memorabilia, and started our number five brewery, Burnt Hickory, in downtown Kennesaw. Operating like a garage band, gigging in the basement to create unique recipes like graham cracker stout, Burnt Hickory is a can't miss for beer loving taste buds everywhere. When the law changed in 2016 to allow production breweries to sell beer on site, Eagle Creek Brewing Company, our number four choice, became the first brew pub in Georgia. Located in downtown Statesboro, Eagle Creek offers a full restaurant menu, music from local artists, and a constantly rotating selection of their excellent beer. 
Hopefully the next law they get rid of is loitering so you can stay here forever. In ancient Greece, academia was a place outside the walls of Athens where Plato taught his school. In modern Georgia, Academia is a brewing company in Athens where head brewer Morgan Wireman teaches the art of truly great beer. Coming in at number three, this brew pub is home to distinctive ales with unique yet balanced twists and an incredible menu of Greek cuisine. Be sure to stay for a second round because as Plato said, there's no harm in repeating a good thing. Grumbling in at number two is Grumpy Old Men Brewing in Blue Ridge. Founded by a couple of old retired guys who went from brewing in an outdoor shower to opening their own brewery, this place has brought joy to beer enthusiasts since 2012. In 2018, the guys decided it was too much work, so they passed the tap handles to a grumpy couple and moved their butts to the other side of the bar. Perhaps this second retirement would give them the smiles they so richly deserve. Beer does that kind of thing. Located 70 miles east of Atlanta, you'll find our number one brewery, Creature Comforts. Since 2014, they've made some of the most in-demand beers in the South. Located in a former snow tire building, it's become a mecca for beer enthusiasts and was named a top 10 brewery by USA Today. Have one sip of their award-winning IPA, Tropicalia, and you'll agree that Creature Comforts is the comfort zone for taste. Go there, drink beer, be happy, you know what to do. Standard. James and Martin are headed to a farm outside Atlanta to harvest the key ingredient for their beer, the beloved, revered Georgia peach, which I'm sure they'll treat with the utmost respect. When you're in a store, the best way to find out if a peach is ripe or not is to bite it. Unfortunately, that got us kicked out of the store. So we came to this peach farm, which is closed. So we're going to take the law in our own hands and steal some peaches. Luckily, I'm military trained. SAS to be exact. It's starting to rain. Probably God punishing us. The God of peaches. <laughs> You're military trained, but you can't get over this fence. Sloppy. Let's do this. Find some peaches. I think I think there might be some up here. Ah, ah. Ah. Stand back, you'll be impressed. Oof, that, that was a bee. Mmm. Ah. This one's too good to put in a beer. I'm going to eat this one. This is what they call a perfect peach. Just check it to see it's not poisoned. It's safe. I lost Martin. Feels like we've been in here for days. James! Oh! Oh! John seems like a dog. If he was military trained, he would know exactly what that meant. This is like the most delicious peach I've ever tasted. These are going to be amazing in our Atlanta beer. And that's part of the military training again, is you come prepared for everything. So prepared. Ooh, good the balance. So the best ones are the big juicy ones right at the top. Mmm, look how juicy this is. When I squeeze it, it just falls out. Mm. Got peach up dope shit in this bag. So we've still so many peaches. I'm just get to see the last few to eat. Yeah, it's hard to stop once you start. I don't feel quite as bad as I thought I would with stolen peaches. And that's how it starts, James. You start stealing one little peach today. Tomorrow, you go back and you steal five peaches. But it won't stop here. What will happen next? Well, next you'll start stealing cars. And then? And then you end up a crack core. I'm well on that path. Let's go. And the best way to steal anything is to take TV cameras with you. Yeah, totally inconspicuous. Nobody's gonna know that was fake. Now that the guys have acquired the key ingredient, they need to figure out how to best infuse it into the beer. And who better to help them than some of the rising stars of Atlanta's food scene? We're here at Victory Sandwiches, where through the back, they've got a secret tiki bar. So secret, we're speaking about it on TV. Mm, so it's not that secret. But I've heard there's some amazing illegal pop-up chefs back there doing some fantastic things with peaches. I wonder if they'll let us taste the special four-course peach tasting menu. No kitchen, no problem for Chef Jared Steber. Nicknamed the Prince of Pop-Up, he's known for providing fine food without the price tag or the pretense, or as he likes to call it, Michelin Tire Dining. He's brought in a couple of fellow chefs to help figure out the best way to get peaches into this beer. And you guys are all pop-up chefs? Yeah. Yep, yeah, exactly. Right. And so my pop-up Eat Me Speak Me shares the space with the tiki bars. You want my food, you have their drinks, you want their drinks, you have my food. So we're here to make a beer, we're making an IPA. We want to put peaches in IPA, but hopefully you guys can help us figure out the best way to cook those peaches or do something with those peaches to pair with this beer. Cool. And this yeah. is going to be an illicit beer, and we heard that, Jarrett, that you might be one of the best chefs in the whole of Atlanta. Maybe you could rustle something up. Sounds good to me. See it. Let's go, peaches. 
only makes sense that we should wait till Jarrett gets back. <laughs> okay, let's go double jeopardy. All right. Start with 10.5% double IPA. Why not? There you go. It's a Monday. So what do you think of the Jarja beer scene? Insane. It's uh, blowing up. I it mean, really has. It wasn't too long ago, there was one brewery in the city. And then all of a sudden you turn around and there's this one and this one and this one. And wait, there's more. Yeah. The thing is, the quality is really right. there. It's not this big kind of homogenous glop of everybody making similar beers. They all seem to have their own identity and have found their own niche. All right, so this is a cold peach soup, just because it's so hot here in the summer. But is it gluten-free? It is gluten-free, <laughs> vegan, dairy-free. It checks all the boxes without trying to, so it actually tastes good, hopefully. <laughs> oh, let's, uh, let's taste it. When you mentioned peach soup, I thought it would be kind of quite sweet, quite juicy, but it manages to be like really savory and earthy, and at the same time, really showcase the kind of bright, fruity hit of peach as well. Yeah, it's a super savory dish. You've got the leek coming through there, you've got the saltiness, and then you get a little hint of the peach coming through underneath. Right. It's really incredible. Thanks, I'm glad you guys enjoy it. Cheers. 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 Yeah, it's really interesting, but you know, I want something that really speaks pure peach. Right. Let's maybe see what's coming up next. Yeah, you got it. Some chicken wings. Yes. Thank you. I would literally yes. eat wings the rest of my life. These don't look like normal chicken wings. Mm -mm. These look incredible. These probably look a little different. We got the eggplant, the peaches, the potatoes, a bunch of herbs to kind of brighten it up, and the kimchi paste that's the sauce component for it. We get the whole chickens in, butcher them ourselves, so you get the flat plus the tip. Drum it, it's a little more meat. So the only bad thing about this dish is the fact there was only two chicken wings, which I've now reduced to mere bones. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the beauty of fine dining. So you, you don't pay for what you get, you pay for what you don't get. That's the secret. <laughs> I won't tell you. So this dish is good, we've got peaches in it, but I'm not sure if chicken wings is going to go too well in the beer. <laughs> What's next up? We're going to do a flan, traditional old school dessert, sort of an egg custard with caramel sauce that comes with it. I was thinking that darker caramel sweetness would work with the honey saccharin inside of the peaches. And then we'll marinate them with some bourbon. So if there's bourbon in this dessert, how about we take the peachiness up another level? We will see if we can make shot glasses for bourbon out of peaches. We can no, pair the two together. I Sounds it. good. I'm to all me. about it. Yeah. While the guys carve out their custom peach shot glasses, Jarrett heads back to the kitchen to create the third and final dish. Look at those. What's going on here? This is fancy. Looks like you know what you're doing. This really, really hits that sweet spot nicely. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a big sugar bomb, and it's a great showcase of what the peaches do naturally. I think we've found our peach. I mean, this peach flambe and bourbon, I think, would be perfect in beer. I think so, too. Just amps up the intensity of the peach that's in this with the bourbon in there. This is delicious. So sort of the bitterness from the bene seed we replicated with the hops going in the beer. Oh, yeah. And bourbon just makes everything, including life, better. That's a good Agreed. point. True. Agreed. If you could hook us up with some of these peaches to put in our beer, that would be amazing. Yeah, I think I can do that. Done. Done. Cheers. 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 Perfect. Oh. That'll do. <clears throat> this should totally be a thing. If only this table were a sink, we'd be in a little bit of a It's a bit sloppy, it's a bit messy, but it's delicious. That's part of it. So are the best things in life. Exactly. <laughs> Jarrett's going to marinate the peaches overnight in bourbon and vanilla and deliver them to the guys on brew day in what's sure to be a safe and responsible manner. It's brew day, and the guys are headed to a remote location to see what criminal mastermind David Donnelly has cooked up for them this time. We've met David in some pretty dodgy places before, but nothing quite like this. Uh, well, this is Atlanta. If you need help to do anything illegal, David Donnelly's your man. Holy fuck. I told you David was good. This is how we're going to make our illegal Atlanta beer. Is this not the same truck he used to shift that 20 tons of heroin? I think that's how he's going to pay for his retirement. David, how's it going? Real good. David, Matt Shara. Nice hey, to meet you. Heard a lot about you. Thank you. Hey, David. Hey, bud. Well, that's a tender hug. When you mentioned a semi, I wasn't expecting anything this impressive. For a man of your age, you've got a mightily impressive semi. So, where are we going to brew in this? Come on, check it out. I'll yeah. show you. Yeah. Oh, David. All right, gentlemen. David. Here we go. We got a gimbalized here. 
So you can roll with the punches as you're going down the road. And you'll be driving the truck, David? Yeah, I'll drive. This looks like what we brewed on the basement to begin with. This is where we got started, so it'll be like being at home except for mobile. And is this a nicer setting to make beer than the basement, or would you go back to the basement instead? Well, my mother-in-law's not here, so that makes it better. So this won't emit any smell, noise, or odor that will draw attention to us? Maybe we need to pick up the speed so the aroma just wafts away. If you're doing one illegal thing, it doesn't matter if you do it anymore. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good philosophy for life, I think. Yeah. David, if this all goes wrong today, will you maybe build us a brew system in jail so we can make some pruno? Absolutely. <laughs> so we're going to be back here, starting from the law, with boiling liquid sloshing about, trying to make the ultimate Atlanta huge peach IPA. What could go wrong? Not a fucking thing. David, I think we're ready to start brewing. If you want to jump in the cab. OK. And remember, don't break any road laws. We don't want to draw attention to ourselves. No problem. No problem. Totally I'm indiscreet. Uh, I, I, shh. I'm still hurt. Grandmother, in your case, but fine. Let's do this, gentlemen. He is the worst driver I know. Fuck. Let's see if we can mash in in this moving vehicle. Let's do it. What do we got? David hits the road, hauling his precious, if somewhat illegal, cargo. And all he needs to do is make great timer. Well, who didn't see that one coming? David, what's going on? We just got pulled over by the police. This is not a good start. This has not got off to a good start. David, keep calm. Whatever you do, do not panic. I am not going to jail because of your bad driving. Have you seen my new haircut? If I get put to jail, I am going to be bread and buttered. Mostly buttered. <laughs> We're under control. He's, he's approaching me here. Uh, but please mash as quietly as possible. Keep me smoking crack again. Quiet, quiet. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? How are you doing? Hi. Do you have license registration? Uh, I do. Keep going. You going to mash in here? See if we can mash in as quietly as a mouse. So this is a seriously big IPA. So we've got bucket loads of malt to go into this. We need to hit 27 Plato. This is the biggest beer we've ever made in this kit. Oh, Matt, have you got the speciality malt back there as well? The reason I stopped you today is so you got expired tags. Matt, what do you think would happen if we got caught just now? Uh, I'd lose my license. It's a rental vehicle. I just assumed that they would uh, keep that under up to date. You think it's good? I think it's really good. What's David doing? We could fucking rock out. And to the police in Georgia County guns. Everybody's got guns in Georgia. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna give you a warning. I need you to take care of that, okay? It, absolutely. But can you outrun a bullet? No, but I don't have to be faster than a bullet. I just have to be faster than you. <laughs> Good point. Okay, boys, that's an all clear. We are free and clear. Continue, over and out. I thought he was gonna snitch for sure. Thinking the truck looks a little conspicuous, David gets to work on some minor modifications to keep it flying under the radar of Johnny Law. OK, boys, what do you think? Perfect. David, yeah. you're a genius. No one's going to suspect a thing now. Fucking kidding me? We can now do whatever the hell we want in the back of this van. Let's go. So this is a massive beard. I think it's the most malt we've ever had in this mash tun. Then we're going to have to sparge it, move very hot liquids while this truck is flying along the highway. OK, let's get the sparge arm set up and start transferring. Oh, oh my goodness. OK, this is very hot liquid. It's a little dangerous. Relax. Fuck. If making beer was like this every single day, would you find a new job? David! Sorry about that, fellas. Just be careful. Stop! Whoa! What the hell are you doing? How can I do this more carefully? Do it quicker. Thank you, Matt. Are you scared? I'm a little concerned. <laughs> it's amazing how much that's lashing about. Yeah. Oh, Go whoa! Back, back. <laughs> I saw no, it coming. I didn't. My head was down there. So, yeah, well, I'm sorry. We're going super fast just now. Matt, where do you think we might be? Well, based on where we started, we've got to be going around the city around 285, probably just taking the loop. So this beer will probably be brewed all over Atlanta. <laughs> Cheers to one of the most stupid ways we've ever tried to make a beer so far. That's pretty fucking dumb. <laughs> it's pretty fucking dumb. 
I think we're getting exactly what we need. Super, super intense sugar in there. Yeah. It's going to allow us to have a lot of sugar to make a huge IPA. Let Atlanta drink it up. The boil's going perfectly now. Matt, are you ready for some peaches? Let's see what you got. We're about to turn this up to 11. We will need some safety glasses. Let's go back here. Matt, you used to play baseball, huh? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> oh, shit. David heads to the back roads, where they're set to rendezvous with Chef Jared and his bourbon vanilla infused peaches. If you're making an illegal beer in the highway and you want to use some peaches, you're going to need a convertible Jeep, a t-shirt cannon, a baseball mitt, and a callous indifference to common sense and danger. Martin, open it up. There's only one good way to deliver bourbon-soaked peaches to a couple of Scottish guys on a back road in Atlanta, with a t-shirt cannon. What has he got? Yeah! Whoa. Whoa. Holy shit! God damn! Holy smoke! These peaches are coming in at about 70 miles per hour out of a t-shirt cannon. This bit's coming fast. Oh, oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> These peaches are coming in so hot, it's like we're under Back attack. Off, I'm shit. just glad no one's died so far. Oh, oh, good catch! Yes. Okay, we've got all the peaches we need. Let's never do that again. Martin, close the door. Let's get them in the kettle. This is what a peach looks like after it's came at our head at eight miles an hour out of a t-shirt cannon. Perfect for the kettle. They're not just peaches. These are peaches that Martin and myself stole, but they've also been marinated in vanilla and them. bourbon. Yeah, we stole them. Oh. Jarrett's an amazing chef. Let's oh, see yeah. what he's done. Bourbon, bourbon, bourbon just explodes out of there. It's more liquor than peach. There's a lot of bourbon in there. This piece of bourbon soaked peach was almost the death of me. <laughs> Three inches to the left, it would have gone right through my eyeball. But you guys got some hard ones too in there, so it's going to have a lot of different kinds of peach. Oh, I think they were the ones I picked. Oh. I thought the harder the better. That's what she said. Oh. <laughs> Stand back, it's still boiling. Well, it's going to splash Whoa. too. Oh, okay. Ah. Oh. Bourbon vanilla peaches, ultimate Georgia beer. Matt, I think you should put in the final half. Oh, thank edition. you. I usually just eat these. <laughs> so here, there's Centennial, some Citra, some Simcoe. Simcoe's strong in this. And I think that Simcoe, that Centennial's really just getting the amp up and double down in those peachy flavors. It's going to be a fucking big beer. So this beer is bold, unapologetic, in your face. We've made it in a down and dirty, dangerous, hot and sweaty, illegal way. And for me, that sums up Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta is a place where people do things their way, and this beer is done our way, and not the way any legislation wants us to do it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Amen to that. I think when you do anything that's illegal, you're best to destroy the evidence. So obviously, the beer is evidence. We're getting destroyed that by drinking it. Yeah. We need to yeah. do something with this truck. You get David to drive off a cliff. Good idea. Now? Let's call that plan B. As opposed to killing everyone inside, the guys opt to destroy the truck in a slightly less fatal, though equally epic, way. God damn. So we're ready to pitch the yeast. I managed to get a hold of some San Diego super yeast. And because this is an illegal beer, Obviously, I purchased it through credit card fraud. Oh, God. <laughs> Not for the first time. I guess we'll never forget this. I'm never going to forget it unless I'm questioned by the authorities, in which case none of this ever happens. To Atlanta. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Atlanta is known as the Magic City, and if you're looking to conjure up a great craft beer, here are our top five beer bars in Atlanta. Grab a beer and a growler for home at our number five bar, Hop City Beer. Founded in 2009, Hop City was the first retailer in Atlanta to fill growlers and specialize in craft beer. Of their 60 beers on tap, 20 are always local, making Hop City the draftiest place in Atlanta. Coming in at number four is Nonic Beer Bar and Kitchen in downtown Columbus. They've got 30 rotating taps, a food menu that focuses on shareable dishes, and an inviting, cozy atmosphere that brings people together. If you do make a new friend and leave, stop by Nonic's sister location, Multitude, a world-class beer shop just down the road. Our number three bar, Trapeze Pub, is named for Trappist monks from Belgium who are famous for making incredible beer. They have 24 taps, locally sourced cuisine, and a menu of almost 200 bottles. Trapeze stocks every high-quality Belgian beer offered by their distributors, and their goal is to bring people together in a far safer way than using an actual trapeze, which would be an absolutely terrible idea for a drinking establishment. 
Located in the heart of the Little Five Points District of Atlanta, our number two choice, the Porter Beer Bar, is a go-to destination for beer lovers. With 44 taps and over 800 bottles, even the pickiest beer geek can find something here. It was rated Best Beer Bar by Creative Loafing, which is either a magazine or an artisanal bread company. One thing's for certain, they have excellent taste. The Brick Store Pub is our number one beer bar in Georgia, and perhaps one of the best bars in the country. They have two bars to choose from. The main bar is a relaxed sunlit pub, while upstairs is the Belgian Bar, an intimate eight-tap ode to the three owners' life-altering trip to the Sudsy motherland. And be sure to check out the Brick Store's outrageous upstairs beer cellar. With over 900 different selections, it's considered one of the largest beer cellars in the world, even if it is upstairs. Now that James and Martin have bootlegged a beer on the back roads of Atlanta, it's time to find out if crime really does pay. Hello, Atlanta. We have loved being in Atlanta. This city is bold, it's unapologetic, it's passionate, it's diverse, and we've loved it here. We came to Atlanta with one very simple mission, to make the most illegal beer ever. And that beer turned out to be a quadruple bourbon and vanilla peach-infused IPA. We wanted to make a beer that captured some of the essence of Atlanta, some of the bootlegging, some of the gambling. We wanted to make a real hoodlum of a beer. So we thought, OK, well, we need the help of one man and one brewery. We need Matt at Scofflaw. This beer is 13.9%. It's definitely, definitely not higher than 13.9%. <laughs> Georgia is the peach state. Technically, you've produced more cabbage than peaches, but no one wants to live in the cabbage state. So, <laughs> I thought I'd treat you to a few peach jokes. <laughs> and I have to apologize that some of them are pitiful. <laughs> Number one, we're going now. <laughs> what did Super Mario say when he split up with his girlfriend, Princess Peach? said, it's not you, it's a me, Mario. <laughs> to be honest, there's not even that much to do with peaches. Because we're in the peach state, we had to use peaches in our beer, but not just any peaches. The peaches in this beer were handpicked by myself and Martin, possibly without permission. We found it's much easier to get forgiveness and permission anyway. Yeah! Illegal peaches. <laughs> Damn right. But the most important part about making this whole beer is that we couldn't end up in the clink. <laughs> because if you look this good, you do not want to be inside cell blockage. <laughs> so what we did was we got our friend David to hook us up with what's called a rolling casino. And that is a truck, in essence, that he put our brew system into. So we were bombing down the 285 with the brew system in the back. Matt and James and myself in there. And we needed the peaches, so our friend Jarrett from Eat Me, Speak Me, he gave us some awesome bourbon and vanilla infused peaches in a fashion that could only be described as warfare. <laughs> he fired them at us with a fucking bazooka. <laughs> and these things are flying past our head at over 100 miles an hour. Literally two inches, one of them, from my face. <laughs> So we brewed the beer, and it was pretty fucking epic, if I say so myself. <laughs> but then what do all good criminals, sorry, what do all good alleged criminals <laughs> alleged. do at the end of their spree? They get rid of the evidence. So we took that truck to the wrecking yard, and we ripped it to absolute <laughs> smithereens. <laughs> Secondly, the beer, and we're going to destroy all of that evidence tonight by drinking all of it. Yeah! I'm going to show you how we like to taste our beers in Scotland. We like to take our time, we like to get to know the beer. So this is what we do. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? So think about what you're tasting. This beer is massive in terms of flavors. This is peach on peach on peach. This is vanilla on vanilla. This is bourbon on bourbon. 
It's not the most complicated beer, but the flavors it delivers, it delivers with such velocity and such intensity, just like Atlanta. <laughs> So you've just had our ultimate Atlanta beer. What did you think of it? It's fantastic. It's definitely boozy, definitely peachy. You can taste the peach, you can taste the vanilla, you can taste the bourbon kind of all at once. Which is something you don't always get. I love the peaches, I love the finish on it. Um, and then bourbon, of course. I mean, you can't go wrong with bourbon. I think it's great. Devil tastes totally illegal. Kind of like a tinge of a felony. And this beer is definitely not higher than 13.9%, huh? Absolutely not. Categorically, definitely, definitely not. 13.9, watered down perfectly. <laughs> well, let's do this shit, man. Have you visited any strip clubs since you've been here? I would never do anything like that. That must be someone else that looks exactly it's like me. Yeah, it's a different thing altogether. What's the best one to go to? Probably the Claremont Lounge. Oh, that's good because... Yeah, it's dark in there. I've been there a lot. They recycle, though. Have you been to the Claremont Lounge? I'm sure a lot of people ask you about it. It's the, one of the nicest uh, strip clubs um, that I've been to. I'm going there right now. Drink beer from here. Where is here? That's Drink right, state of Georgia. I thought I'd just like drink beer from here and like what strippers do sometimes and put a can Well, I, I do carry a six pack in the form of a pony keg. <laughs> I'm getting to drink beer from Georgia. I'm not sure I'm getting to drink it between your nipples. <laughs> no, 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 no. They don't leak. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Have you ever done anything illegal at all in Atlanta? Uh, I'd rather not say, you know, we'll keep that under wraps, you know, but uh... What was it? Did you whisper? Jaywalking? I mean, jaywalking is a simple one. Absolutely! Smokes weed. We'll keep that under wraps. Yeah. Why would you do that? How is skinny dipping illegal? <laughs> I mean, it's Atlanta, bro. It's our secret. Cheers, my friend. Cheers to first degree murder. I think this is an absolute fantastic beer. It's possibly over 14%. It's a huge beer. And right now, we would love to invite Max, this man, up onto the stage. What the fuck did we just watch? <laughs> Raise your hand if you couldn't understand a fucking word. It's a big fucking Atlanta beer for a big fucking city. I thank these guys for coming around. We had an absolute blast making this beer, and we really hope that you appreciate it. We put our heart and soul into this beer. We love this beer, but. It's for you to decide if this is a fitting liquid representation of this amazing city. So we're going to count to one, two, three. And if you like it, if you think it's a good Atlanta beer, shout fuck yeah. And if not, just be quiet. We don't care. <laughs> okay, so do you guys think this is the most Atlanta beer ever? I yeah. want to hear a fuck yeah on the count of three. One, two, three. You've been amazing. Good night and God bless America. Yeah! I will deliver you a 13.9-ish percent beer. Oh, that's not how the show works. We all make it together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Well, then I will give you the ingredients to make a 13.9 Again, no, no, you don't beer. just give us the, You help us. Did you not watch any of the episodes? I before? didn't see it. I was... I, was, I don't think anyone watches it. I was okay. fucking stoned, man. Come on. <laughs>